Good evening. Good evening, We are just going to wait for the others a couple of minutes. And then we are going to begin with the topic that we are going to develop today. Um, we have a grammatical topic. Uh, we are going to try to uh, go a little bit deeper in this topic because I know that in some cases we learn about this topic and it is just to um, make some activities related to the words that we're going to learn in this, uh, I think two sessions, because we are going to like use two, two sessions to talk about uh, this specific part of the grammar topics. And also we are going to talk about another grammar topic in the other two sessions that we are going to have in this uh, week. You know that uh, this is the beginning of the week number three, but um, you already know that uh, this beginning of the week is not on Monday because we do have a, a little rest time yesterday and we are beginning the sessions today. That is not like, uh, in this case, we normally had the second session, but in this case, we are just uh, beginning the week. And we are going to end this week on Friday. So in this case, we're going to have the last session of this week on Friday. And the next week, that is the last week, um, we are going to have the same thing because you know that we have Mother's Day in the middle of the week. So we are going to work also on Friday the next week. So in that case, we are, we are going to stop the sessions for um, a day because we have like different uh, special dates so in that case, we cannot like have the sessions in that moment. So uh, another thing that we are going to work in the section number four, uh, you know that we are on the week number three, but we are going to uh, work on the section number four on the platform. And the next week, we are going to work on the, the section number five. And also, we are going to work on the final exam. If you can work on all the activities that you have on the platform and if you can access to the activities and perform all of them, even the final exam, you can do it. Because uh, in that case, you are very sure that you have completed all of the activities that you have for this course. If you can think a little bit, you can notice that we are going to end the course the next week. So we have a couple of days to complete all the work that we need to do on the platform. So my advice is that you begin working on the activities in this moment or when you have time in this week. So you can complete all the activities in, in those days. Um, so I was saying to your partners that uh, we are going to talk about a grammatical topic. This is a very funny topic and also it's a very easy topic because we are going to talk about the adjectives. Um, in the platform, we need to talk about words to describe people. And in that case, it's like focusing on describing people the way they look, the physical appearance, the emotional uh, um, elements that people have or something like that. But today, we are going to begin with the boring part. I am saying just yes, boring part because um, it's me talking about the information that I have for you. And in some cases, it's just like um, adding and adding information to the document but I want to like go a little bit deeper in this topic. I know that when we are learning English, we talk about the adjectives and we are like, oh, I can use the word beautiful, ugly, uh, white, black, and all of the things. 
But in this case, we're going to see like different elements that we need to know about the adjectives. And then we are going to have like some exercises. And tomorrow we are going to see the videos that we have on the platform that are like making the use of this information kind of easier and interesting. In that case, we're going to like listen some conversations. We are going to see the examples of some uh, words that we can use to describe people. And in this case, we are going just to focus on the, the general information. And tomorrow we are going to like um, go like very specific words that we are going to use for describing people. You know that we have a lot of words that function as adjective, but we are going to begin with the um, the meaning of the adjectives. What are the uses, um, different elements that we can find on the adjectives. And also we are going to see like very specific things related to this topic. So in this case, we're just not uh, going to talk about the vocabulary or the words that we can use to um, talk about people, places, animals, and all of the things. In this case, we are not going to have this kind of list. We're just going to have like a very specific information related to, to the adjectives. Así que vamos a tener diferentes um, elementos relacionados a los adjetivos. ¿Qué son los adjetivos? Básicamente, ¿a qué parte del inglés, verdad? ¿O a qué parte del idioma en general corresponden estos adjetivos? ¿Cómo los podemos utilizar? Vamos a ver algunos elementos específicos de los adjetivos. Vamos a enfocarnos también en los comparative and superlative adjectives. Eh, en la forma de crear estas oraciones, los elementos, a lot of things. Y también hay algún par de ejercicios por ahí. Si no logramos completarlos en esta hora, pues los vamos a hacer mañana, ya que tenemos dos sesiones para completar el tema de los adjetivos. Ya luego vamos a pasar con otro tema que también es parte de la gramática y el viernes vamos a tratar de completar los knowledge check y también el final exam. Por si hay dudas, por si no logramos eh, pasar algún ejercicio, eh, tal vez no completamos el examen, I, I mean, no, no es el examen, es de la otra semana. Si no hemos completado los knowledge check en esta semana, si hay alguna duda con algún ejercicio, eh, si no logramos completarlo, no tuvimos tiempo, whatever it is. Así que vamos a tratar de completar los knowledge check y ya la otra semana, que sí, ya es donde vamos a ver el examen final. Vamos a tratar de hacerlo el día viernes, ¿verdad? El examen final para los que no han podido avanzar con esas actividades. I know that it's kind of complicated for us because we have our... Uh... Excuse me, teacher, una pregunta. Tell me, tell me. En el caso, por ejemplo, de las, de las sesiones, eh, he notado que varios compañeros han tenido problemas a la hora de responder las, las, los, los ejercicios. Uh -huh. Pero, eh, eh, ¿verdad que no se ha dejado que después de la hora en la cual revisan? O sea, eh, ya, no se, ya, no se puede uno, ya no puede uno responder a la, a la actividad, sino que ha sido como problema de... de, de, de el servidor parece, porque hay que estar refrescándolo. Sí, es que en, en, uh, en los últimos meses el servidor ha tenido un par de problemas. Eh, lo que pasa es que a unos les carga más rápido, a otros no, hay otros que desde el teléfono a veces no pueden entrar, hay otros que solo cuando entran al enlace que se les ha enviado el correo pueden entrar directamente, y otros han tenido problemas porque no les, no les reconoce las respuestas a pesar de que las respuestas sean eh, válidas. En, el, en ese caso siempre les he dicho, eh, tal vez no a ustedes, sino a los otros grupos, que cuando ustedes estén poniendo sus respuestas y se las tome como malas y ustedes ya hayan probado por mil y una formas, ustedes saquen screenshots y los vayan anexando. Y siempre hay una persona que si ustedes se fijan, es la persona que les manda los mensajes al grupo de hoy hay clases, hoy no hay clases, o re revisamos la plataforma tal día y tal día. A esa persona ustedes directamente le pueden mandar las pruebas de que ustedes tuvieron problemas para accesar alguno de los ejercicios, por ejemplo. O si a ustedes no les carga algún audio, eh, no les aparece alguna de las lecturas, ustedes directamente ahí. Porque ahí se va a notar que usted está pendiente de la plataforma. Si usted no pudo entrar 
y ya no lo hizo y dijo, bueno, a mí me salió mala y hasta aquí me quedé y ya no hice nada, entonces ahí es diferente porque ahí van a decir, bueno, esta persona pues no hizo nada, le salieron malas y así las dejó. Pero en el caso de ustedes que están pendientes, pues mandan sus capturas y ahí ellos van a hacer lo posible por ayudarles con el uso de la plataforma, porque sí, hay ciertos problemas. Eso sí, ustedes pueden preguntarles a ellos hasta qué momento. Es cierto que les dejan un tiempo límite, pero también hay como un periodo en el que ustedes pueden seguir eh, realizando sus ejercicios. Entonces, si han tenido problemas, ustedes les mandan mensaje y les dicen, mire, yo estoy tratando de entrar, pero no me reconoce, no me carga, no me apareció, esa persona le va a decir, ah, no se preocupe, trate más tarde y se le va a dar, digamos, tiempo hasta el sábado, por ejemplo. Pero ahí es básicamente comunicación, ¿verdad? Si usted tiene problemas, usted mande captura y ahí está todo tranquilo, no hay ningún problema, no le va a parecer malo en, el, en la plataforma. Ok, now, we're going to begin, um, we're going to begin with the information that we have for the first part. I just have um, some information that I want to show you, and in this case is related just with the general information or the general idea about the adjectives. We have a lot of information related to the adjectives because uh, we use this information in Spanish. And it's like when we are like having uh, classes uh, on the school, the university, uh, in whatever level we are, we see something about the adjectives um, because it's part of the language. It's part of the ideas that we need to um tell the others. But first, we have the phrase for this week. Uh, it says that our greatest weakness is lies in giving up. It's the same thing as we were uh, talking about the platform. If we have a problem and we try it once, twice, a lot of times, and we don't like find the solution, so in some cases, we decide to give up, to stop doing the things, even when we are like very, very close to the end of the problem. And that's why we cannot find the best way to uh, solve our problems. But in this case, it's related to uh, the stress that we are living in our lives. Maybe we don't have a clear idea of what we want for our lives in the future or we are just so um, overwhelmed with the problems or something that we are living in our life in this moment, but we need to keep going. That is the, the clue of this, of, of this thing. You need to, to move, even if you find a wall in the path that you are walking. Pues la frase básicamente dice que eh, nuestra debilidad más grande, ¿verdad? Eh, está en darnos por vencidos. Sabemos que la vida es difícil, tenemos situaciones que se nos salen a veces de control, se nos salen de las manos, y cuando somos de aquellas personas que nos encanta, ¿verdad? Eh, tener todo en orden, llevar una secuencia, que yo llevo un horario, que si no se cumple el, el, el plan como yo lo establecí, pues hasta me duele la cabeza cuando somos tan estrictos con estas cosas y la, los planes no nos salen como nosotros los hemos hecho, como nos los hemos imaginado en nuestra cabeza, porque incluso a veces solo lo maquinamos en nuestra mente, pero no llevamos una secuencia ya sea escrita, no llevamos eh, algo que nos acredite a nosotros, ¿verdad?, sobre el plan que estamos realizando, y se descontrola esto porque no tenemos plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D y todo el abecedario. Y cuando pasa algo que nos descontrola el plan A, que era el único que teníamos, nos damos por vencido. Y ahí es donde vienen muchos de los otros problemas que empiezan a aparecer. Porque nos dimos por vencido con uno, porque no nos resultó, porque no nos dio, porque no le entendimos, no le encontramos la solución, la salida. Y empezamos a, empiezan a caerse las piezas del dominó, ¿verdad? 
empieza a caer esto, esto, esto y se termina toda la carrera de los dominos. Entonces, básicamente nosotros tenemos que aprender a sobrellevar muchas situaciones estresantes, pero que al final nos va a ayudar a encontrar la salida y vamos a lograr nuestras metas. So, in that case, we have the phrase for this week. And you know that um, we need to keep going to complete all the things that we need for our life. Okay. Now we have the phrase and then we are going to begin with the information. In this case, when we are learning English, uh, we have uh, information that is very important. And in this case, we are just going to make like a, we're not going to extend to that part, but in this case, we are just to mention this information because it's very important that we know these kind of things when we are learning English. And in this case, we have the part of a speech. They are a very important part in the acquisition of the language. Es como las partes del diálogo, básicamente. And in this case, we have two, four, six, eight. We have eight part of a speech. Estas partes del diálogo, del discurso, the part of a speech are very interesting because there are all the things that we learn when we are um, in this process of acquiring the, the language. Son ocho cosas, ocho elementos, ocho partes de eh, que nosotros vamos a utilizar para aprender inglés. Y obviamente, in Spanish, it's not like we keep that in mind because you know that we are learning the language since we are um, babies because we are uh, listening our pa parents talking in Spanish and they are using a lot of words and we are like repeating, repeating, repeating. And then we began um, speaking. And in some cases, we didn't know what is the meaning of the words. But with the time, you have like the knowledge about the language. And that's why we can like speak in Spanish. And it's very natural because um, we hear that language during our lifetime, uh, when we are children, when we are teenagers, when we are uh, young, adults, and all in all places too. And in this case, when we are learning English, because we are going to focus on English, we need to separate these things. We need to separate this information because we need to, to know what are the elements that we need to achieve in this case. like talking about levels. So in this case, we are talking about the parts of a speech. And in this case, it said that almost all words have a part of a speech. Which part of a speech a, a word has depend on how it is used in a sentence? ¿Cómo se usan las palabras? Casi todas las oraciones, ¿verdad? Están compuestas por las partes del discurso. Estas dependen en cómo se utilizan en una oración. Y tenemos ocho partes. But we are going to write here, but parts of a speech. And we have a list of eight parts. So, in this case, we're going to see different elements that we already uh, study, but we're going to make like a, a group of these words. We have first the noun, the verb, the adjective, the adverb, the conjunction, The preposition, the pronoun, and the interjection. Okay, 
In this case, we already learned about the noun, the verb, the adjective, the adverbs, the prepositions, and the pronouns. Um, um, I don't know if you have learned something about the conjunction and interjection, but all of them are part of the speech and we use them uh, without thinking that they are uh, maybe conjunction, maybe interjection. But in this case, um, son bastante importantes las ocho, porque a la hora de construir, ¿verdad? Eh, oraciones, a veces nosotros las, las utilizamos sin saber, ¿verdad? ¿A qué se refiere? En el caso de las conjunction, son siete. En son, eh, son eh, las palabras que utilizamos más que todo para unir. Son for, in, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Son esas palabritas que nosotros las utilizamos y que, ah, es or, el o, el and, el i, for, para, but, pero, yet, aún. Esas palabras que nosotros a veces solo las utilizamos para unir oraciones son conocidas como las conjunctions. Obviamente nos están ayudando también a unir, a darle un sentido. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, what do you say eh, aún? Noun. No, aún. Aún, yet. Uh -huh. yet. ¿Cómo lo dice? Is this one. Yet. Ok. Mm -hmm. That is yet, que lo utilizamos para eh, referirnos a un cuando no ha pasado algo y también lo veíamos en la parte de los temas anteriores que se utilizaba al final de, de una oración. Cuando estábamos hablando de, si no me equivoco, de los quantifiers or something like that. Ah, no, en el caso de much and many or something like that, había oraciones en las que íbamos a utilizar el yet como que todavía no había pasado algo, pero se utilizaba al final de la oración. Uh -huh. Ok. En el caso de las interjections, son... Básicamente, nosotros cuando hablamos de ellas, estamos hablando de de palabras o incluso sonidos que demuestren emociones. And in this case, uh, it is used to add emphasize or an effect um, to the phrases that we are uh, constructing. And in this case, it is like this interjection is not going to change the meaning of the sentence. In this case, we can use like things. Um, podemos utilizar como onomatopeyas, como en el caso de whoops, bam, de los sonidos, ¿verdad? O algún como frase o, o, o sí, como una frase específica para algunas situaciones, como. Y ahí entran en caso también las muletillas, dicho. Maybe so en algunos casos. Sí, si lo utilizamos como mucho para tal vez para pensar, um, um, maybe mm, esos sonidos así también los podemos utilizar en las interjection. También está como congrats, pero con con énfasis. Ah, yay, hooray o como yes lo lograste. Eh, wow y hay una como una expresión que utilizan bastante en inglés, que es el holy moly, que es como cuando se sorprenden, ¿verdad? Entonces, todas esas entran en las interjections. También el uso del no, del ah, uh, oh well, great, o todos esos entran en la parte de las interjecciones. Por eso les decía, tal vez esas dos partes, como lo son las conjunctions en las interjections, no las hemos estudiado como tal, pero sí las van a llegar a ver en algún momento, porque sí son partes de, eh, 
de, del diálogo, de la parte en la que nosotros nos expresamos. Ya hablamos de los nombres, cuáles son los nombres, ¿verdad? Los, los propios, eh, nombres comunes. Eh, también tenemos los verbos, que es una de las partes más utilizadas en, en, en esto del inglés y de la adquisición del idioma, donde tenemos que aprender eh, the difference between the simple, I mean, the eh, regular and irregular verbs the pass of the verse, the, the different uses that we can give to the verse, the action that, uh, the, the subject, or in this case, uh, the, the person that is doing something. Uh, also, we are talking about the adjectives, that is a very important part of the speech. The adverb, we already talked about the adverbs. And the prepositions, in this case, we have different type of preposition, but we were talking about the preposition of a place that is very common also. The pronouns, we already talked about the pronouns. That is the first thing that we need to, to learn when we are learning English. That are the I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. Some of the rules, some of the, I don't know, different things that we talk about the pronouns. So. We already know that we have eight important parts of the speech. Ocho partes importantes, donde tenemos los nombres, verbos, adjetivos, adverbios, las conjunciones, preposiciones, pronombres y las interjecciones. Entonces, ahora que ya sabemos que tenemos ocho partes importantes, nos vamos a enfocar en this one. That is the adjectives. Because in this case, we are talking about this one just. We are not going to talk about the nouns, the verb, and not all of them. So, what is the meaning or what is the, the, the general information or the most important information that we have about the adjectives? In this case, we have that the adjectives are, or in this case, an adjective is a word or phrase. Remember, a word or a phrase that is used to modify a noun or a pronoun. Obviamente va a modificar lo que es el nombre y el pronombre, pero también, y esta es información que nosotros hemos aprendido a lo largo de, de la adquisición de, de esta información, que los adjetivos también nos ayudan a dar información extra de una cosa, de un animal, de una persona, de un lugar o de algo que queremos describir. Porque básicamente utilizamos los adjetivos para hacer descripciones. In that case, I am like talking about, um, let me see. I have like some cards here, if I am sure. Where are my cards? I have a, ah, this one. I have a deck of cards here that are like, um, game for children. It's un juego para niños. And I have different cards, and I like to show because I, I really like the the drawings. And I have like this kind of cards. It is not like very. Uh, I don't know. It's because of the like this one. But I'm going to show you one by one. So in this case, if I told you that you need to describe, let me take this out for a moment. I need you to describe this image. It's, I don't know, like this. I think it's better. This one is a tree. It's called a tree. It's llamado un árbol. Porque básicamente tenemos un árbol, but we have different elements. In this case, we have um, a sheep. We have a whale. We have a house. We have um, a monkey, a cat, a bicycle, a chair. Uh, we have different elements here. So in this case, if I am uh, describing uh, this image, I'm going to use adjectives. Why? Because I need to tell you a lot of information that I have. In this case, I have a cat. I think they like is kind of this one like this, a cat. In this case, I need to describe this cat and I'm going to tell you, I have a small, I'm beginning with the adjective. I have a small cat. It's 
orange with white. Es naranja con blanco. I'm using the description. It has something red. It's very, I don't know, playful and very noisy. Es bastante um, ruidoso. And in this case, in this one, it says a curious whale. Una ballena curiosa. This one, the curious, la palabra curiosa, es mi adjetivo en esta oración que yo tengo aquí. Estoy describiendo la ballena. ¿Cómo es la ballena? Curious. Es una ballena curiosa. So, in that case, when we are making descriptions of the thing, we are using the adjectives. In this case, we have another one here. It's kind of complicated to see this uh, kind of uh, letters because they have a different kind of uh, written mood. But it says, a small boat. A small boat. Es un bote pequeño. In that case, small is my adjective. Es small es el adjetivo que yo estoy usando para describir el bote. Uh, let me see if I have another one that has um, an adjective. Mm, no, this one is just the name. A duck. An orange good hand. This not it. it is not like uh, the complete thing, but it says an orange good hand. That is referring that the the orangutan is like orange. So it is a combination of the color and the name of the animal. It's kind of funny. Uh, there, this one. We have a boat here or a ship in this case, but it says a big boat. Big, grande. That is my description of the boat. That is big. And in that case, I have the description of the um, the boat. In this case, it is not like an adjective. Uh, we're not talking an adjective, but we have a pink house. Yes, it's kind of pink. But we are talking about places in town. The house, the house across the street. The house across the street. But in this case, we have a house and we have a little, little, very little guy that is taking the house from its place. Then I have nothing more. Because in the other the other cards, we have just um, a fireman. Just firemen. Tenemos a los bomberos. And the other ones, I have a ladder. Tenemos una escalera por ahí. Alguien con una escalera. Um, a paint bucket. Es un pintura, ¿verdad? A paint bucket. Then we have the kitchen sink. And we have someone that is very, very dirty. Alguien que está muy sucio por ahí, pero se refiere a al objeto, no a la persona. Then we have a dog, un pato por ahí. Very cute. The dog is very cute. And, ah, and the lighthouse. The lighthouse. In this case, all of these elements, the lighthouse, the dog, the boat, um, the orangutan, the kitchen sink, the ladder, the house across the street, the fireman, and what else? A paint bucket, uh, the small boat, the curious whale, the kitchen or Mitch, that is another name for kit for I mean for for a cat. It's here in this one. In the three. We have all of those elements here. And we can like see one by one and we can like make a description of all of the things that we have on the image. And this kind of like 
um, cards are very useful for that kind of topics because we have different elements that we need to see. And in this case, we can see like the image of the, the things that we are going to describe and we are going to use a different elements. In this case, you can see, ah, oh, I just can use the colors, uh, you can use the material, but we can use like the different colors that you can see on the image, like in this one that we have a uh, different kind of colors, we can use or we can talk about the material of the boat. Uh, we can talk about the person that is here and all of the things that we can uh, use to describe this image. This one is like have more elements. That is this one, the lighthouse. We can talk about the lighthouse itself, the colors, the materials, how big it is. Also, we can talk about the person that is kind of hard to see because it's kind of little bit of little. And we can talk about the the ocean, the all of the elements that we have on the on the cards. So, en este tipo de tarjetas, a veces nosotros las vemos y las pasamos por alto porque son un juego para niños. En este caso, eh, it's called um, Go Fish and it's a three-in-one card deck. Este es un juego que está creado por Oliver Jeffers y en este caso es para preguntarles a los niños, ¿verdad? Sobre diferentes elementos. Se les da tres tarjetas a los niños, ustedes hacen preguntas, los niños les dicen si tienen o no tienen la tarjeta. Pero también es para la concentración y eh, eh, se refiere a un libro. En este caso es a children's book that is talking about the elements that we have on the, the cards. I find very interesting the painting of the cards because they are very beautiful and also the material of the cards is very expensive. But I find this one on a secondhand um, it's, uh, shop, so it's kind of cheap in that case. So. We have these elements and we need to describe, we need to give more information. That's why we're talking about the adjectives because we have two different things. One of these is to modify a noun or to give more information. Es dos elementos importantes. O damos información del nombre o el pronombre o en este caso lo modificamos. But we are going to... Uh, Keep this one, that is the second one, that it says an adjective is a word or phrase that is used to modify a noun or a pronoun. Okay, and we have an example here because we need to talk about uh, uh, these examples. And we have this one. The snake is long and green. La serpiente es larga y verde. So in this case, long and green are words that are modifying the noun. Y en este caso, el nombre es la serpiente. In this case, I'm going to do it now. It is not like very... I can see the, the letters in this case. I'm just going to... Like this, it's better. So, in this case, in my sentence, the snake is the noun. And, and I am modifying the noun. Because I am saying that the snake is long and green and also i am giving you information and you can create that imagine in your head ustedes se pueden hacer la imagen de la serpiente larga verde pero en este caso no estamos hablando si es delgada si tiene manchas eh, ya comió y se le nota verdad que ya comió porque tienen un bultito or we don't know anything more we just have this very 
simple information about the snake. In this example, long and green are adjectives because they modify the noun a snake. That is the thing that we were saying. Some words modify nouns that are not adjective. In this case, we need to be very clear that if we are modifying the nouns, not all the time it's going to be an adjective. We have different elements too that are going to modify the nouns. And we can have like these ones that are called attributive nouns and they are not predicative of the noun. They, um, so they are not adjectives. En este caso hay otras palabras que modifican al nombre que son estos que se le llaman como nombres atributivos pero que no son predicativos del nombre así que no son adjetivos, cosa que ahorita no los vamos a tocar. Um, so, in some cases, uh, in this case, we have some words that they can function as adverse also and different things, but we are not going to see like the difference between the words that are attributive nouns or uh, adjectives or different things that we are going to um to find when we are talking about the adjectives. Porque a veces nos encontramos como eh, frases o palabras que en lugar de hacer la función del adjetivo van a tener una función diferente. Que pues obviamente son los, no, los nombres atributivos y que al mismo tiempo pueden funcionar como adverbios y son diferentes elementos, pero hay que... Eh, como que nos vamos a, a meter mucho en esa parte y puede ser un poco confuso ahorita. Así que no vamos a, a tratar eso por el momento. No, we are going to talk about the usage of the adjectives. So, in this case, uh, we know that these ones, the adjectives modified the noun or the pronoun to make the sentence clearer and more specific. This one, adjectives, adjectives answer the following question. Los adjetivos nos sirven para, pues obviamente, modificar nuestro nombre y también nos sirven para dar más información, para hacer la oración más específica, para que sea más clara, pero tiene que responder las siguientes preguntas. Number one, what kind? What kind? Number two, how many? And number three, I mean, and number three, which one? Tres preguntas sencillas que tenemos que responder con, eh, con los adjetivos. Cuando estemos utilizando los adjetivos, tenemos que ser bastante específicos. What kind? ¿Qué tipo? In this case, we can talk about the material. Uh, we can talk about the elements, the color or something like that. Um, how many? También utilizamos los números como adjetivos. ¿Cuántos hay? And which one? Acuérdense que el which es para eh, cuando tenemos dos opciones. Entonces, vamos a describir which one. ¿Cuál de los dos? In this case, we can add different elements. Eh, si estamos hablando de un objeto, which one? Um, I like that book. Nosotros podemos decir esa oración. I like that book. Which one? Ah, the one that is color green or the green book. El libro verde. Y damos especificaciones sobre los libros. Entonces, ahí contestamos esas tres preguntas de esa forma. Ahora, the adjective usage. And it says that if an adjective is placed after the noun or the pronoun that it modifies, it follows the form to be. So in this case, if we are after the noun or the pronoun that uh, the adjective is modifying, it is followed by a whatever form of the verb to be. Tiene que ir seguido, ¿verdad? De las formas del verbo to be. 
I'm going to write this one like number one. And how it is this possible? We are going to see some examples and also we are going to explain something about them. So in the first example we have, we uh, he was always forgetful. He was always forgetful. And in this case, the adjective forgetful, that is the last one, is este, verdad, olvidadizo. Um, modifies the pronoun he. Ahí está modificando, ¿verdad? Al pronombre. No es que solo porque lo puse al final no está eh, modificando nada, sino que en este caso estamos hablando de he. He was forgetful. Pero obviamente le eh, agregamos como algo entre medio, que es el always. Pero estamos hablando siempre de la persona. He was always forgetful. Él siempre fue olvidadizo. Next one. Island is lush and green. So in this case, we're saying that both lush and green are adjectives that are modifying the word island. In this case, when we are using um, adjectives, we are going to use a lot of, um, like, we can say that a, a lot of adjectives, it is not like a limit of a word that we can use in this case. If you want to describe a house, and you can use like three or four um, adjectives, you can use it. It is not like you are going to have something uh, wrong. No es como que vayamos a tener algo malo si utilizamos dos o tres o cuatro incluso adjetivos en la expresión, en, en, en la oración. Um, porque nos permite, ¿verdad? El uso de los adjetivos tener varios. Entonces, en este caso, lush and green, que lush significa como exuberante. Eh, básicamente, ¿verdad? Es algo demasiado bonito o, o que tiene muchas cosas buenas como eh, si hablamos de eh, la naturaleza, pues puede ser también frondoso eh, porque pues tiene mucha naturaleza, mucha parte verde, ¿no? Por eso dice lush and green. Entonces, ahí si se fijan, lleva Arlen is, lleva eh, la forma del verbo to be, igual que en el primero, he was forgetful. Arlen is lush and green. Ahí estamos modificando la palabra island. In that case. So, I'm going to mark this one and this one. Okay, number two. Okay, number two. It says that the adjectives can also follow sense or appearance verbs such as look, taste, smell, feel, and sound. Cuando estamos utilizando adjetivos, también podemos eh, seguir el sentido o la apariencia o los verbos de apariencia, como son el verbo look, el verbo taste, probar, ¿verdad? El eh, verbo smell, oler, el verbo feel, sentir, y el verbo sound, eh, sonar, ¿verdad? No es simplemente el sonido, sino el sonar. Adjectives can also Uh, 
and we are going to see the examples. And in this case, we have the following. It says, the night hair from the ocean smell crisp. The night hair from the ocean It smells crisp. So in this case, we're using the word smell or the verb smell. Um, like in this case, when we're talking about crisp, we can have different meanings, but it's like very uh, fresco. We can like that kind of, of smell. Um, but we are using the verb smell. The night hair is from the uh, from the ocean it smell crisp. We are talking about smelling something. She looks very beautiful tonight. She looks. Ahí tenemos la palabra. She looks very beautiful tonight and we have here our adjectives and beautiful ella luce muy hermosa esta noche so in that case we're using the verbs that are, uh, are talking about the sense or the appearance. En este caso estamos hablando de la apariencia, ya que estamos diciendo cómo se ve ella. Estamos hablando básicamente de la apariencia. Number three, adjectives can also be placed before the noun that modify. Can also be placed Before the nouns, they modify. So, in this case, we can use these adjectives antes, ¿verdad? De los nombres que modificamos. Normalmente los encontramos después de los nombres pero también los podemos posicionar antes de los nombres que estamos modificando. Hay ciertos adjetivos que van mejor eh, al principio, ¿verdad? Antes del nombre, porque ahí mismo hacen como esa, eh, ese contraste, ¿verdad? Más que todos los que tienen que ver con colores. Como un recurso literario también se podría dar, o sea, el, el rojo atardecer, ¿no? Ajá, exactamente, exactamente. Y en muchos de los casos, como se le dice, ¿verdad? A veces cuando estamos eh, mega principiantes, que las traducciones son diferentes, o sea, no porque en el... Eh, En, el, en la oración en inglés, pues el color o alguna palabra aparezca antes y a la hora de traducirlo lo vamos a traducir tan literal. Entonces, a veces aparece así, pero es básicamente porque tenemos que hacer como la conversión. Eh, en ese caso, como hablamos de los colores, vamos a ver este ejemplo. And it says, the colorful sunset. The colorful sunset. El colorido. ¿Verdad? El colorido. No podríamos dejarlo al principio. Bueno, sí podríamos, pero sonaría un poco raro. El colorido, la colorida puesta de sol. La puesta de sol colorida. Sale o se escucha mucho mejor. O el atardecer. Podemos utilizar cualquiera de los dos, porque igual puesta de sol es como que eh, no lo utilizamos mucho. Eh, el colorido atardecer o el atardecer colorido que es mucho mejor que decir el colorido atardecer, ¿verdad? Ahí es dependiendo también de cómo nos sintamos nosotros cómodos. The colorful sunset can be seen in the photograph. Por eso es que a veces personas de habla inglesa eh, sounds kind of funny when they are like speaking in Spanish and it, it is not because of the pronunciation of the words. 
It is for the translation of the words because they are translating um as they see, as they uh, can construct the, the statements. Y esa es una parte bastante importante para nosotros. Cuando hagamos las traducciones, nosotros podemos traducirlas así como salen ahí. Así como dice la, la parte 2, adjetivos pueden también seguir sentido y apariencia, verbos como. Pero cuando nosotros lo decimos así, no tiene un sentido en realidad. Entonces le agregamos nosotros elementos para que la traducción sea más entendible. Los adjetivos también siguen verbos de sentido y apariencia. Y en muchos de los casos también se recorta esa información. No vamos a hacer un, tal vez tenemos una oración muy larga, pero redunda la, las palabras, ¿verdad? Redundan las ideas y tenemos que tratar de acortarlas. And that is a very important thing that you need to, like, understand. Because we can make uh, the translation of the things, but we can also need to give sense to the words that we are saying in, in English and also in Spanish. For me, one, one of the most, like, complicated things is to... Not is is not to translate is to um interpretar like make making the interpretation of the words. No es tanto hacer la traducción porque cuando nosotros tenemos un documento nos tomamos nuestro tiempo hacemos las traducciones revisamos verdad eh, cómo queda mejor la oración que no pierda el sentido todo eso. Pero cuando se hace en vivo una interpretación de lo que alguien está hablando y yo tengo que hacerlo en español a uh, casi al mismo tiempo. I think it's kind of complicated, but it is not impossible. But it's kind of complicated in this case for me because I have like a lot of things in my mind and I am not like uh, making the 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 idea very clear and I'm just like translating and translating and translating and after that I just said ah that is not good it will be like this es como que estoy traduciendo y hago las traducciones a, a lo salvaje podemos decir la verdad se traduce se traduce se traduce pero después digo ay esa frase quedaría mejor de esta forma o lo hubiera dicho mejor así o eh, es más entendible de esta forma entonces para mí es como bastante respetable las personas que hacen sus interpretaciones en vivo y en directo y no se equivocan tienen un control muy bueno tanto del, eh, del idioma que eh, están interpretando como de su propio idioma in my case I prefer translating paper books or something like that in which I am writing and making like um, changes or all of that things but like that I am not very good But it's a great exercise. It's very, very interesting when you are listening to someone speaking in English and you are trying to make the interpretation of the message that they are giving. But doing it in a real time, it's kind of complicated, but it's, it's kind of funny sometimes. So in this case, we have the, the adjective beautiful modify. I mean, what is the, the, oh no, the colorful sunset? The colorful, it's modifying the word sunset. And in this case, it's at the beginning. It's before the noun. That is possible? Yes, of course, it is possible. Now, we have something that is called compound adjectives. Tenemos otro elemento que se llama adjetivos compuestos, o en inglés, compound adjectives. And this compound adjective is for when two words are used as one expression to modify the same noun. Estos adjetivos compuestos se forman cuando dos palabras están siendo usadas como una expresión eh, que modifica el mismo nombre. But we are going to see more about the compound adjectives tomorrow because it's time to end the session and we are going to see to, uh, tomorrow in the next session. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow.
See you tomorrow, Miss. See you. See you tomorrow, Miss. See you. See you tomorrow. See you. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you. See you.